One of the fundamental mechanisms by which information is exchanged in the brain and central nervous system is through coordinated action potentials transmitted and received by neurons. Action potentials, also called nerve impulses, travel along neurons as a depolarization wave as ions enter and exit the neuronal membrane. At the same time, there is a change in the polarization of the membrane as neurotransmitters travel to the postsynaptic neuron. This is called the postsynaptic potential and it generates an extracellular electrical potential around a neuron. Around an individual neuron, the extracellular potential is extremely small. However, summing the synchronous activity of thousands or millions of similarly oriented neurons within an area of the brain creates a measurable signal called the local field potential. In the cortex, pyramidal neurons are particularly well aligned to produce a signal measurable from the scalp. This is how the electroencephalogram, or EEG, measures brain activity. The EEG is primarily thought of as a measure of cortical activity. However, cortical and subcortical structures, such as the thalamus, are richly interconnected. As such, EEG patterns can reflect the coordinated action among cortical and subcortical structures, and therefore could help infer the state of subcortical areas as well. The EEG signal is most commonly viewed as a waveform measured in volts. The waveform is composed of oscillations, or waves. Oscillations are patterns that repeat themselves over a certain time period, or frequency. In the EEG, the frequency is related to how fast synchronous neurons are synapsing. During anesthesia, the oscillations present in the waveform will change as the patient progresses from an awake, eyes-open state, through sedation, to an unconscious state. If you are practiced in reading the EEG waveform, you may be able to visually isolate individual oscillation components that combine to form the waveform. Consider this waveform for an anesthetized patient, and let's grab a short, one-second piece of it. There appears to be two primary oscillations that make up this signal. First, we have this slow, gradual wave, which does not quite complete one full cycle within this one-second time frame. There is also a more rapid oscillation that we can determine the frequency of by counting the number of repeated cycles present within the one second. There are about nine cycles. We use the measurement of hertz to denote the number of cycles per second. There is an associated nomenclature used to categorize the frequency of the oscillations that combine to make up the waveform. With practice, you may eventually learn to identify the individual frequency components of the waveform, but luckily, spectral analysis can make this process much faster and more precise. Within a window of time, spectral analysis mathematically decomposes the EEG signal into all the frequencies that make it up. In addition, it calculates the power at each frequency. Power reflects the amplitude of the wave, specifically, it is the amplitude squared. This creates a spectrum plot. In the case here, we see our prominent frequency components are in the slow delta and alpha bands. However, the spectrum is for one segment of time, and in the OR, we want to see the evolving pattern of the EEG. To do this, the spectrum is calculated at each instant in time, and then each successive spectrum plot is stacked together as time progresses. This results in a three-dimensional plot called the spectrogram, where we have frequency, power, and time on the axes. Power is measured in decibels, a logarithmic scale that makes smaller features easier to see. The spectrogram can also be plotted in two dimensions by removing the power axis and using color coding to indicate power. The spectrogram is a powerful tool to have at our disposal for deciphering the EEG. Looking at this spectrogram, we can clearly and easily see the two primary frequency components that make up the waveform, a 10 to 12 Hz alpha oscillation and about a 1 Hz slow oscillation. Using the spectrogram, 
we can take the waveform, which can often be complex and hard to decipher, and look at it differently. We retain all the rich information within the EEG waveform, but visualize it in a much easier to understand manner. For example, the EEG waveforms for anesthesia with different anesthetic drugs can look very similar, but viewing them as the spectrogram clearly shows us they have distinct, clearly distinguishable patterns. Once we are familiar with these patterns, we can use them to deliver personalized anesthesia care for our patients, as we are effectively seeing the current state of each patient's brain. Other videos in this series and the associated CME course will help you explore the unique patterns associated with different anesthetic drugs.